Professor Lu. Welcome to our live stream. Today we are going to be doing a live draw along focusing specifically on the male head. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We're gonna be focusing on photographs by the American photographer, Dorothea Lange. And I think you guys are really going to be surprised by some of the faces we're going to be working on today because they're just really striking portraits that we're going to be using. I recommend taking a look at this anatomy lecture so that way you guys have a basis for the structure of the head. And remember, if you're looking for the reference photos for today's stream, you can go into the Discord. I post stuff in news, it's also in the Draw Alongs channel, and you guys can post that anytime. You can do it during the stream, afterwards, if you miss the live Draw Along. Love seeing what you guys make during these live streams. And of course, we love it when you guys post on Instagram, tag us art.prof, and use hashtag artprofshare. The materials we're gonna be using today, first of all, I wanna say thank you to Legion Paper for providing the Stonehenge Colors paper that we're gonna be using today. They've got every paper you guys could possibly imagine. Check them out, it's a really great company. And these are the supplies that I'm gonna be using. But again, with all these draw alongs, use whatever materials you guys have on hand. I'm gonna be using black and brown Conte crayon. I have three erasers. I've got the eraser stick, white plastic eraser, the kneaded eraser, and also this pad of Stonehenge colors from Legion paper. All right, let's get started. I was thinking, you know what? I've been so terribly out of shape, <laughs> have not had the opportunity to do much drawing at all, that I just really, really want to do a bunch of five minute drawings just all in a row. And then probably I'll end with a longer portrait, but I just need to get my blood pumping right now. <laughs> and let me know you guys in the chat if you're feeling the same way or you've been way better than me and have been drawing a lot this week. Okay, let's put up our timer. And the artist that we're looking at today, the photographer, Dorothea Lange, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this very famous photo that she shot called Migrant Mother. We're not going to draw this piece. It's just too famous <laughs> for me to actually do that. But Dorothea Lange was a documentary photographer and she really focused on images of the Great Depression. She shot a lot of photos for the Farm Security Administration. And we also have actually some portraits because she actually did a lot of photography at the internment camps for Japanese Americans, specifically at Manzanar. And if you guys want to see the original photographs, the links are in the video description below because the photos that I'm using for the stream, they've all been cropped. So that way we can really zoom in on the head. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start with a bunch of five minute poses just to get ourselves going because I am not in shape. So not <laughs> sharp right now. I did wake up pretty early, but I am not feeling that with it right now in terms of drawing. This is a really striking portrait. I think what I really like about Dorothea Lange's portraits is she's really drawing real people. I mean, she's similar to Diane Arbus and Nan Golden the two photographers that we looked at last time, but really, I mean, she's documenting history in a way that I think is different than Diane Arbus. I mean, certainly they were doing that as well, but obviously what they were doing, a lot more contemporary, and these are like historical events that Lange is showing. And you know what, you guys, I am ready today to just make a mess. I, I just want to do it. I could care less what happens because I just want to move. I feel like some of the last draw-alongs 
I've been a little bit too hesitant and I have not been moving at the pace that I normally move at and that bothers me. I want to get way, way more gestural and move like crazy. So whatever comes out, comes out, that's fine. And I'm just gonna work like a crazy person today because I, I just need this. Too many really slow <laughs> tasks going on this week that were just needed to be done, but weren't that satisfying. You know, those types of things. You're like, yes, I have to do this, but I really don't want to. But then when you get it done, there's no feeling of satisfaction. <laughs> so it's like not that fun. So anyway, what I was thinking is we'd start with the brown Conte crayon just as a quick layer. And then maybe for the more sustained images, I'll go in with black Conte crayon and really punch up the contrast. I'm not totally sure, like I'm not really somebody who usually draws with two different colors, but I think sometimes that's helpful. And especially also you guys will notice, maybe it's not so easy to see on camera, but the paper I'm using, it's got like a really beautiful, like creamy tint to it that is really lovely. It, it just has a little bit of warmth to the portrait that I think is really nice to see. See, I cheated a little bit, you guys. If you look in the Discord, <laughs> I was like so mortified by how out of shape I felt that I actually did a warm up before this session. Because <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> So I, I will admit, yes, I had a little bit of a jump start ahead of you guys, but I just, ugh. you ever wake up and you just really need to move? I mean, I'm not kidding when I was saying earlier in the chat that I literally do stretches because drawing is such a physical experience for me and I need to get myself into that mindset. I mean, it really is like warming up to play a soccer game, something like that. And I enjoy that very much. I feel like this guy looks a little bit like David Byrne. <laughs> Does anybody else think that? I don't know, maybe it's the hair or something. Anyway, and by the way, I will be stopping to look at your comments in the chat. Every now and then I'll take a break from the drawing and do that. So if I'm not replying to your comments right now, that's why. I, I just can't draw and read comments at the same time. It's too difficult to do. So don't worry, I will get your comments, just not while I'm drawing. All right. I, I always mess up this guy's nose. His nose is so bizarre. I mean, it's got this really dramatic arch to it. And I think probably the tip needs to be a little bit more dramatic. I mean, that's why I love these photos by Dorothea Lange. I mean, these are real people. And I, I really feel when I look at her photos, you, you can read history in these faces. It's really extraordinary. And tell me in the chat, have you guys heard of Dorothea Lange? You know, I bet you anything, if you have not heard her name, you probably have seen her photographs before. At the very least, that migrant mother photo is so famous. I mean, most people have seen that photo at some point, but uh, I'm hoping you guys that by doing these photos by these famous photographers that you're learning something about photography as well, because that's oftentimes an area people don't really know where to look for things. Okay, so that is the first drawing. Let's go to another one. And this one we're going to do again, like the last one for five minutes, because I just got to get my blood pumping. Okay, so the next image we're going to do is this image here. And there's actually a little boy that's sitting on his shoulder. You guys can look at the full photograph. The links are in the video description below. But I really like this portrait because it has a very beautiful tilt to it. So let me make mine a little bit bigger and then we'll get going. Okay, so let's set the timer again to five minutes. We'll get started. I think I'm going to do three in a row, and then I'm going to stop and take a look at comments. Okay, this figure has a major tilt to it, and so you got to be very conscious of that from the get-go. I think already I've made him too straight, and so really try to capture that tilt and make it more dramatic than you think it should be. I think it's really easy to underestimate how dramatic that tilt is. 
And really, I'm going to use the nose as a frame of reference. And actually, the tilt of the mouth is also good. I, I struggle with these tilted heads. I don't think they're easy for anybody. I think everything just gets all wonky and weird. Very tricky, although this guy has great eye sockets. I mean, he is making your lives very easy right now. So appreciate a good eye socket when you get it because, wow, they make a big difference in terms of that structure. All right, I gotta move more. I, I have to, and don't forget the back of the head. Like you guys will notice that the hair, I mean, the hair in this particular photo, it's very gestural. So for that reason alone, you wanna have it, but I also think people forget that there's a head beyond the face. That's extremely common. And so actually what I try to do when I do talk about portraits is I oftentimes try to refer to the head as opposed to the face. Because to me, the head is a complete structure and the face is just a piece of that structure and you don't wanna forget about that, all right? Great zygomatic arch going on in here. I wanna make that a little bit bonier. So it really juts out. And we got really dramatic shadows here like this cast shadow that's underneath the nose and even below the lip, it gets quite dramatic. And like I said, I'm making a mess today, guys. I, I don't know what you're doing, but that, that is my, my concept. Whoa, that mouth is not lining up. Okay, again, I don't care. I'm making a mess today. That, that's, my, that's my requirement. That's my goal for today is just make a mess. So maybe we can all make a mess together and see how that goes. I don't think, I think the ear is like all the way over here. Let's just push this little to the side because I definitely, see the thing is I don't usually use the eraser this early in the process, but this is part of my idea about making a mess. I just want to throw it down. I don't know, I just feel really aggressive today. <laughs> Maybe it was because we were talking on the stream yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw Scott Gilley's portfolio. And Scott, maybe you're here today right now. But we were talking about, in that critique a lot, about getting more physically aggressive and really being bolder and not caring so much about how things look or about the outcome. So maybe that, I don't know, influenced my thinking this morning when I woke up. I don't know. You never know. I mean, I'll tell you guys, I know a lot of people sort of make the assumption that, oh, critique is only helpful when they're talking about my work. I might feel that way, but actually I find that when I'm critiquing other people's work and looking at their work and thinking about it, it gets me to think about my work. So this idea that critique is only useful when it's about you, it's actually not true. In fact, sometimes, and you guys can tell me if you agree with this, sometimes I have an easier time listening to a critique when it's not my work. Because when it's not my work, I'm not so personally invested in it. And so it's, it's easier for me sometimes to hear the critique more objectively. I, I think sometimes, and I still do this, guys, when I get a critique from somebody else, it's easy to get defensive or maybe you're really thinking about your piece a lot or something. And I find when I'm listening to someone else's critique, it's just easier because I can process the information a lot more objectively. And I find that very exciting. So don't, don't think about critique as only for your point of view. It, it's also like hearing what other people are told. And that's why in our Discord, you guys will see that we do have a guideline that asks everybody to respond to other people's critiques and not just post and run. So that that is a big part of our discord that I think is very helpful. Oh, geez, I did not. This psychomatic arch sucks. Oh my God. Like, I really should know better than that. Let's just make it, it's got to be punchier. Ugh, I, I'm still, ugh, it's still not aggressive the way I want it to be. We, we got to, okay, I think I got to get mad. <laughs> Maybe getting mad is the key. Okay, that is that for that one. I'm on a roll, I wanna do another one. <laughs> and then I'll stop and I'll take comments. So the next drawing we're gonna do, oh, I love this portrait, you guys. I don't remember the name of this person, but you guys should look it up in the link. I do have a direct link to this particular image. And I just think it has such a beautiful, demeanor to it. I mean, you, you just really get the feeling 
that they're immersed in deep thought. And I, I just love this so much. Okay, so let's do another five minutes. Get started. And let's do this. I guess I feel a little weird drawing this figure so gesturally because it's such a lovely, kind face. But, oh, I love this, like, I don't know what they're wearing. It's like a cotton shawl or something, but I feel like that is beautiful in itself. Tell, tell me in the chat, what do you guys imagine this person is thinking? Because it's such a beautiful expression. I feel that it's a little bit sad, but also very calm and tranquil. But, you know, people look at faces very differently. So tell me in the chat, what do you think this person is doing or thinking? What is their demeanor from your point of view? Because depending on how you see this figure, you might draw them very differently than the way I would. See, like, look at this area that's behind the face. It's very substantial. There's actually, I don't know if their hair is up, but there's a little piece of form back there. And actually their forehead is extremely expressive. So let's get in some good eye sockets. These are great eye sockets. Oh man, if you guys don't have good eye sockets, it's your fault because this photo is like handing you those eye sockets. It's, it's like really, you don't get a lot of opportunities to do stuff like that. And then look at, like we were looking at those images of Helen Mirren to talk about shadows in terms of the forehead. And you will see here that the wrinkles really do follow the form. Okay, get some major cheekbone action. Okay, this is better. I'm, I'm like I said, I just whew, want to make a mess today. It's fun though, isn't making a mess fun? I love it. <laughs> great. I already feel better. Like every day this week, tell me if you guys did this. It, it just was like, okay, I'm going to get this done. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'll have time for drawing. And then it's like, you get there. And you're like, oh my God, there's no time for drawing. I was like, I'm going to put on Alien Prometheus. I'm going to watch Michael Fassbender be a disgusting android who's mean and evil. And then I'll work on these. And it's just like, it never happened. So <laughs> like, this is the best thing about these drawing streams is to me, it's like the best excuse ever to draw because I'm like, okay, I'm doing our prop, getting stuff done. I'm also sharpening my drawing skills because wow, sometimes if I don't draw for a long time, I just really feel just sort of out of it in a way. And so I, I just love these streams because I, I don't feel that I have to do a great job. I, I can just sit here and hang out with you guys. I love it. It's just so cool that we're all here together. And it occurred to me, like I look at sometimes the stats for how many people are watching the streams. And sometimes we have like 100, 120 people watching. And it's incredible because from a brick and mortar teacher point of view, I always think about it in terms of the number of students I would normally have. So for example, when I used to teach at RISD, most of my classes were like 15, 20 students or so. And I'm like, oh my God, if I'm teaching 120 people at the same time, that's like six RISD classes. That's incredible that just at my laptop, you can reach all those people. That's extraordinary. And it's like, yeah, I would love to meet all of you guys in person someday, but that's not going to happen. And especially with the pandemic, it's like, there's too much going on right now. Although <laughs> I do really want to have Art Prof Con someday when we have the funding and the staff, we will have Art Prof Con and it will have such a blast and we'll have it in Utah and we'll all go draw in the desert. It'll be awesome, but not right now. <laughs> we need to like, first like funding and you know people and staff support and all those kinds of things so someday someday that is in my list of things to do because I told you guys this well I want to take over the world I just I want my own like empire I I want to do all those things like I have no shame saying that. like I feel like in the art world it's sort of like embarrassing if you want to do stuff like that but I'm like no that's what I want I, I want my own empire I have no shame telling you guys about that. Okay. This is feeling pretty good. Oh 
more strokes in here. All right, here we go. That is it for this pose. So let me switch gears and I'm going to switch to my Toxie like this and look at Benedict. You know what's nice about having Benedict and Michael and all my streams is I can just say, well, we need to look at this stream where I talked about Benedict for two hours because it's gonna teach you about top five portrait drawing mistakes. Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and see what people are saying. Let's see. Oh, Lisa H is saying Library of Congress has all of the photos for the program by Dorothea Lange. That's amazing. I really wish I could go there and really see that. So yeah, Pachi G has seen Dorothea Lange's work. And Jay Cabby says, I've been so busy, we'll continue for the rest of the month just stopping by because I love and want to support Art Prof. Thank you so much, you guys. You know, it really means a lot to us when you want to be here to support us because, wow, we some <laughs> months were like hanging on by like a thread, but we're still here. We've been here for a long time and I have some confidence now, but yeah, it's, it's a struggle to keep it going. So when you guys cheer us on, we, we just love it so much. Speaking of Michael, I think I need to recommend to you guys the importance of lighting and shadows and portrait drawing because they'll help your drawings become more volumetric and three-dimensional. You know, if you're ever having dinner with Penelope Cruz in a terrible Ridley Scott movie because you're proposing to her, even though she dies at the end, sorry, spoiler right there, you know, you want to know what that looks like from a lighting point of view. Lighting from above at a restaurant. That's a very important lighting situation for you guys to understand. So some cool comments about the last portrait. Margaret says, I feel this person shows sadness, especially in their eyes and the slight tension in the lips. And Latte says, Art Prof is amazing. I'm learning so much to use in my art class. I take to prepare for art school. Oh, that's great. You know, I have to say art teachers, you have a special place in my heart because being an art teacher is a lot of work. And oftentimes teachers from what I've seen, they get very, very little support. And so I'm so happy we can be there for you. Catherine Chung says, my hand hurts. Well, maybe that's a sign of progress. Maybe that means you're really exercising new muscles. So I would say that that is a good thing. Let's see what else people are saying. Yellow Hat Art says, I started college four weeks ago, and honestly, these streams keep me drawing at least twice a week. It feels really good. It's like a little rest. Awesome. And, and you guys, I'm so excited on Monday. We're going to do a Procreate draw along with Kat and Jordan. I'm not going to be drawing, okay? I'm going to be doing some back end stuff, but it's going to be awesome. You guys are definitely going to want to show up for that particular stream because Kat is so much better at digital drawing. Like you guys will actually learn something because it'll be Kat and Jordan. They actually know what they're doing. So I, I think you guys will enjoy that stream. Add a girl says, what a great selection of images. Curious about Conte crayons. In theory, I'm using the brown, but it comes out so much darker. Same happened with the orange crayon. Might it be the light? You know what, Add a girl, it really is because the Conte crayons are just pretty dense. And so I have to say, I have trouble drawing with them lightly, and I normally do not. Actually, that's one of the reasons I like drawing with the Caran d'Ache crayon so much, because the Caran d'Ache crayon, it's hard to get really dark. In fact, with Conte, uh, with Caran d'Ache crayon, you have the opposite problem where it's tough to get dark. Conte is different where it's hard to stay light, but really easy to go dark. So it's a different set of challenges when it comes to the Conte. And so that is something to consider is that the Conte crayon is just more powerful of a tool compared to the Caran d'Ache crayon. All right. Well, looks like people are thinking Art Prof Con would be awesome, says Seven Angelic. And Scott Gilly says, trying to get looser with my marks as discussed yesterday on the stream. That's so awesome. If you guys didn't get to see Scott Gilly's portfolio critique, we did it last night with me and Alex. We talked a lot about drawing issues because Scott had tons and tons of drawings, which is 
fabulous. And so we talked a lot about being bold, being confident, really laying down a mark and not feeling <laughs> that you need to apologize for it because your drawings should have presence. They should scream, look at me. They shouldn't just be like, I'm sorry, I exist. Like you don't want a drawing like that. You want a drawing that actually makes a statement, something that people will remember. That's what I'm trying to do with my drawings. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. Karen A is saying, love those curlers. Yeah, I mean, people were so taken by this Diane Arbus portrait. And it's a very famous photograph. But I think that my hope through these streams is I'm really teaching you about photography as well. I mean, don't get me, I am not a photographer. Like, I don't know that much about photography, but I think that sometimes with artists, people don't really know where to look. And I think today, a lot of people, their first place to look is Instagram for artists. And that's great. I mean, Instagram will show you a lot of people working today. But when somebody's a historical photographer like Dorothea Lange or Diane Arbus, you're not going to find them on Instagram remotely as easily. And to me, this is way better than, for example, drawing stock photos from those figure drawing sites. I'm not into those so much. I feel like they're a little bit fake looking. So it's really nice to be able to see this. Okay, let's do some more drawing. I, I still want to do some more five minute poses. I, I don't know. I just feel really jumpy today. So let me get back into my drawing position and we will see what is up next. Okay, so let me get my board where it should be and we're gonna go to the next image, which, oh my God, this, this image just so much packed into a face. I mean, you almost can't believe what's there. It's really quite extraordinary. Okay, so let's move this one like this. And I'm gonna stick with the brown. I think I'm gonna reserve the black for when I get into the last piece, which is gonna be much, much more detailed. This I, I'm still gonna be in gesture mode. Okay, so let's do um, a five minute pose and see where this takes us. Okay, so there's the timer. Okay, here we go. I'm not actually gonna draw the whole hat because if I do that, I'm gonna have no space for the head, but I am gonna hint at the hat just a little bit because the hat is very important. If you don't have the hat in this image, you're losing half the personality of this person. So granted, this is gonna go off the page, but I do wanna recognize it matters, guys. If somebody's wearing a hat, it does transform their persona in a lot of ways. So you can't leave these things out. Okay, let's block in the nose. Yeah, like, do you guys see the tension that's in the brow of this figure? It, it's really startling and really nice lighting too from above. All right, we, we need some zygomatic arch action. <laughs> and this guy has great zygomatic arches. And oh man, he's got everything. He's got the eye sockets. Let's see, uh, his mandibles aren't that great. Okay, we, we knew he wasn't gonna go with everything. His, his mandibles, they're, they're not that visible. I guess part of that is because it's a front view because usually in a front view, the mandible's not that visible, but it's okay. He's giving us great eye sockets and he's also giving us really good lighting from the hat just being so dramatically dark. Okay. Let's get in, I feel like the mouth might be, yeah, this nose, I think it's longer than I think it is. But you know what, I'm not picking today. I don't feel like it. <laughs> like some streams, I'll sit down and say, okay, this time I'm gonna really look, I don't wanna do that today. <laughs> I'm just gonna approximate. And you know, I get comments sometimes in the chat or sometimes in the, on the video afterwards and people say, well, I really think the eye should have been a little bit higher and this needs to be two millimeters. And I'm like, I don't care. I really don't. This is just exercises. And even if it wasn't an exercise, I still would not care because I don't think that stuff matters. I think you can have a drawing that is very accurate that actually does not really look like the person. Does that make any sense? It doesn't seem like it should because you would think, oh, well, the more accurate 
the drawing, the more it must look like the person. But I disagree with that. I actually think a lot of the times, the more accurate it feels, the more lifeless it feels. And so it's tricky. And then does everybody see the shape of the eyes? Like they're really different. Like the eye on the right hand side is just a little bit more closed. And then the one on the left hand side is a lot bigger. And I think oftentimes people's eyes are like that. I know my eyes are like that. I notice in photos where I'm smiling, one eye is definitely wider than the other. Like I'm totally such a like crooked person when I draw um, myself. And I, I think that's the way most people are. Like this whole thing about, you know, plastic surgery to correct, correct, whatever that's supposed to mean, your face. It, it just sort of bums me out because I really like what some people would consider character flaws, but I think that they're beautiful and I think that they show the true character of who somebody is and really beautiful. Okay, let's place the ear. I think I spent a little too long. And I'm gonna really go to town on this hat. And even back here, does everybody see there's this like circular shape? You can see the pattern of the hat back here. And you know something, I'm not going to do too, too much with the hat. I mean, I might go back, but I feel like right now I just want it to be a shape. I just want it to have a presence like this. And actually I should keep this negative space up here at the top so you guys can see that a little bit better. Okay, so then, then the angle of that is stronger and lost his psychomatic arch. Gotta put that back in there. Hope you guys are memorizing all your dorky anatomy terms. I'm just kidding. I don't care. I mean, it's fine. Like as long as you know it's some bone thing in that area, that's all that matters. Although it is really fun to act like a big dork and be like, I like your tensor fascia lata. <laughs> Although, you know, the place I used to really <laughs> like check out muscles is the gym. And I haven't been to the gym in months, obviously, because of the pandemic. And I'm like, oh man, where are I gonna get my psychomatic arch fix? right? <laughs> it's like, actually, probably the muscle you see the most at the gym is the deltoid, which is this muscle here. It's your shoulder because, you know, and nobody's wearing like regular t-shirts. People are wearing like, you know, oh man, I did not get far with this. <gasps> okay, whatever. That's fine. I'm going to do another one. Let's make this one 10 minutes because as much as I want to just keep going, I do want to give you guys a chance to do some pieces that are a little bit longer. Okay, so let's go on to the next drawing. And the next drawing is this one right here. This is a photograph from the Japanese internment camps in America, specifically at Manzanar. And the link for this specific photo is again in the video description below. So if you guys wanna check that out, definitely do that. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next page. All right, let's get started. We're gonna do a 10 minute pose and let's see where this goes. Okay, so 10 minutes starting right now. Okay, I need to develop a more delicate touch. I do think I am getting a little too dark too fast. I mean, I know why, it's because I'm being hyper aggressive today but it's a little bit much right now. And honestly, this paper is a little bit smaller than I usually like to work, but this is what Legion paper gave me. And I do believe it is helpful to draw at different scales. Just switch it up. There's no right size that you should draw. Although my general feeling about portraits is that portraits are a lot easier when they're life size or bigger. I find it really, really hard to make a portrait that is smaller than life size. It just, I don't know, it feels a little funky. So this is a tricky pose. Does everybody see the neck feels very straight, but there's like a little tilt of the head. It's a minor, it's not really that dramatic. So make sure you guys consider that because that really does shift the character of this pose. Okay, and then again, just a little bit of the clothes to contextualize that neck coming down this way. This guy's got 
great. But he's got amazing zygomatic arches. Oh my God, it's like putting the other guy to shame in terms of zygomatic arches. Okay. Um, and I think what I want to try to do right now, actually, this is different, okay? I don't usually do this, but let's just do it anyway. I was thinking, usually I do a lot of line work before I put in my rug of tone, but I'm going to start with the rug of tone this time and let's see what happens. It's not to say that I never do this. It's just usually I'm wanting or craving the stability of the line because the line does make more sense when you're trying to really explain the form. But let's just do a different approach today. I think that would be really fun. And you guys can try it with me, you know, like see what happens when you put in that rug of tone sooner, like way sooner than you think it's necessary. And maybe it'll be a disaster and maybe it'll just be a cool way for you to really rethink other options. Because my feeling about drawing, there's no right way. It's just the way that works for you. But to figure out what works for you, you gotta try a lot of different things. If you don't do that, you're, you're never gonna really know what's out there. And so just try it out. Sometimes I'll be like, okay, let's just reverse it, all right? Okay, chin down there. Very dramatic cast shadow. Now see, you guys have watched my Michael Fassbender your video, you would understand the difference between a form shadow and a cast shadow. So if you guys look at this, this is a cast shadow from the nose. This is a cast shadow on the neck. Now a form shadow is like the one up here on the forehead. And then also here on the zygomatic arch, that is another form shadow. And there's a very slight one here. And actually I gotta really punch this out a little bit better. And then I think this guy really needs some eyes. <laughs> He's not looking so hot right now. And ugh, getting too dark too fast again. But I don't care, let's make a mess. So tell me in the chat, are you guys trying what I'm trying, which is putting in the rug of tone first? You don't have to. I'm, I'm just wondering if anybody else is trying that and whether it's a mess, whether you like it, because it is a shift of character, I think, that um, a lot of people are not used to. Okay, so let's lock in the eyes. And these eyes, you, you almost don't see the whites of the eyes. I mean, they're, they're pretty closed, and so there's not a lot of dimension to the eyeballs like the eyeballs are not that visible but i think this is a good challenge for you guys great wrinkles on the forehead yeah i mean i i think this is a beautiful photo i mean it's like i don't know if, if this is something other people think but whenever i look at somebody and they have wrinkles it's like you wonder like where where do those come from is it from age is it from stress because People of all ages have different sets of wrinkles, and I just think they're so expressive. I mean, I just love that about people's faces. Like, the people's faces really do, in my opinion, they really tell a story. Okay, now does everybody see this, what I'm doing here? This is reflected light. And the reflected light here is really dramatic. It oftentimes is not. Sometimes reflected light is really tough to see, but I really want it to be a major part of this drawing because it, it's so key to how the lighting goes on. Okay, now this guy has a great mandible. Everybody see this mandible? Really clear. And also some of these slight wrinkles on the side of the mouth. I'm making them a little bit bolder than they actually are. And let's just solidify the chin. And actually there's like a couple of these little wrinkles by the neck. And then I think I lost his neck. I think the neck is like here. And then let's see, I guess the shirt is pretty dark. Comes down like that. This is pretty dark too. I feel like I lost that form a little bit, but that's okay. Look at that. Drawing is all about that. Killing something, resurrecting it, killing it again. I mean, I probably shouldn't use such a violent <laughs> metaphor, but that really is how I feel. Like I really do feel sometimes that I am like murdering my drawing and then like bringing it back. It's a very dramatic feeling. You know, we're all drama queens. So seriously, like that's what it is. Okay, those eyes are way too close together. Let's move them apart like this and maybe bring this eye further out like that. Actually, this one too, I, I think I'm not getting enough shadow on this side. So let's bring this over here. 
And you know what? I'm totally ignoring the hair. That is not good. So let me go in and just pluck. What happened to your ear, dude? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> the ears here, it, it's mostly in shadow, but I do need it to be a little more clear. So actually let's get some negative space action going on back here. I don't know. I guess I like gave him a haircut or something. Okay. And then some of this hair on this side, there's this sort of directional motion that comes in. I mean, really guys, when I draw hair, it's all an approximation. I mean, you really want to draw every hair? I don't. It's a pain. Okay, I'm running out of space up here at the top, but that's okay. I do want to get... And now what I'm doing is I'm just stepping back and I'm squinting a little bit. And I think I'm making him not long enough. Uh, I think I made him a little too round. I think it's something to do with the forehead. I don't know. It's, maybe he's like too square at the top. Who knows? Whatever. I'll get there. Here's a philtrum. You guys remember that. And, oh, I need to give just a little hint of shadow into the ear. I think would be better. And now what I'm doing, now that my rug of tone is in place, I'm going in and I'm drawing with the tip of the Conte crayon so that I can like pull out some more dramatic lines. Oh, he lost his eyebrow. Shoot. Sorry, dude. Let's do this. Yeah, that <laughs> definitely looks better. <laughs> I think he's not, he, he's more like angular than I made him. I, I think it's this. Maybe it's this section. Oh, and then, oh, okay. I need more negative space back here. So does everybody see, like sometimes to fix something, you have to work on what's behind. Like actually back here, it was not an issue of the neck. It was that I had filled in too much of that background and you can see how much that really shifts your thinking like that. And then maybe a little bolder down here. Um, like this is such a beautiful photo. I just, oh my God, love these photos like that. Yeah, I'm getting to the top of the page. That's kind of bugging me a little bit, but whatever. It, it's a sketch, so we're just getting going. And maybe some more clarity up here. And, oh, well, losing my zygomatic arch. Let's just really dig that in. I mean, I don't think I'm angry right now at all, but I feel like I'm harnessing a little bit of, I don't know, energy in that way. I did have a professor in college. He said that he used to drive to his studio from Manhattan to Brooklyn. And the way he got motivated was driving through Manhattan traffic was so bad that by the time he got to the studio, he was so pissed that it like energized him to draw. I'm like, awesome, you know, like whatever works for you. I think that's great. It's like, it doesn't matter what motivates you. I mean, maybe it's like, you know, watching Sherlock. <laughs> maybe that motivates you. I haven't watched Sherlock in a while, but you know what? I had to take a Sherlock hiatus. I was watching too much of it. I was like, I don't want to spoil it. I want to still really like it. So <laughs> I had to take a little break. Okay, so that is that pose. Let me stop and take a break and see what you guys are talking about. All right, putting this aside, see what you guys are chatting about. And by the way, you guys, we are accepting more art prof shares and that's basically where you make some artwork in response to any video that we have and we give you guys a shout out. On YouTube. So I'd love for you guys to submit. It's on the tutorials page on rprof.org and you guys can check that out. Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat about drawing. Okay, let's see. Karen says, Scott, I look forward to catching up with your stream. Yeah, it's really fun, you guys when one of you is on a stream with us because we had Neil, we had Scott, and we have people from all over, but I don't know. I feel like it's like especially fun when it's like somebody you guys have interacted with on the Discord. Christian Delion says, amazing demos. I'm planning on giving my high school students images of white objects to draw, but they have to be images because of distance learning. How do I keep them from simply tracing? 
I don't think they have to be white objects. I mean, if you're going to take photos of them, I think they can be something else. And I mean, I don't know if you're doing a live demo or if you're doing something where you send them a photo or something, but I don't know if you pick white objects that are maybe not cones and squares. I don't know if that's actually what you're doing, but we actually do have a project idea on our website, which is to collect all different types of white items. And that helps you see the different shifts of color. So I don't know what your lesson is, but that's what I would do is just pick things that are not necessarily just plain cones and stuff like that. Okay. Raw Nook says, I started a portrait with a rug of tone once, and only that was when I could do this one particular drawing. Cool. Aaron Carter says, the drawing's mandible is still not wide enough. Yeah, but you know what? I don't try to sweat that stuff because I just really think that what's more important is like capturing the personality. The accuracy is not that important for us. Okay. David says, I love how this makes me more conscious about contrast as I keep drawing each pose. Very cool. And Carolyn says, I both like and dislike what I did. It looks more like the image than I expected, but also less done. Carolyn, less done is not necessarily worse. Some of my favorite drawings that I've seen in art history are drawings that look like they took five minutes. And so this idea of is something done or not, which by the way, we did do a stream based on that. I don't think something has to be like resolved and rendered to be effective. I, I think some of my favorite drawings really have a gestural quality that can be very, very exciting. Scott says, definitely feel like this one let me loosen up my strokes a bit. He looks a bit older in mine. I do that too, actually. <laughs> like, I don't really know why, but everybody I draw always looks much, much older. <laughs> maybe it's because I like to emphasize wrinkles and angles. I don't know. I suppose maybe that is the reason why. Although I like what Karen is saying, older means more character. That is better. And Blue Will Spirit says, I'm so amazed at how these short sketches are coming up better and better. When I first started, it barely looked like a person. That's so common. It's just a matter of warming up, staying sharp. Like, don't you guys feel more awake now that you've done more? I mean, I always feel like the first drawing, I'm walking around in a fog and I'm not really reacting that much. And I just feel like I, I just get into the groove a lot more. That's why that physical engagement is so, so important. Vincent says, I feel energized drawing along because when I draw alone, I get exhausted easily. Yep, I think you guys, you need that peer support to egg you on because I'll tell you some of my favorite times in art school, it's like me and a friend or two, we're up late, we're working on our projects. And there were so many instances where I was like, oh, I'm done. I don't want to work on this painting anymore. But because I was working with somebody, that friend would say, no, 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 you got to just do a little bit more. And if I was alone, I would have stopped right there. But because somebody was there to get me excited again, I kept working on it. And most of the time it does get better. So yeah, these draw alongs are great for that. It's, it's really like an online hangout where we can really egg each other on, which is fantastic. All right, Margaret says, I know what you mean. <laughs> Tom is asking, how are you liking that paper? I love that paper. That paper is, it's a little too nice <laughs> for just your drawing. Like, I feel a little bit guilty using it, but I'm like, okay, Legion paper, they're so awesome. They sent me all that paper, but I'm not used to using nice paper for stuff like that. So it, it's like, it's just a mindset thing. Like, I'm just not used to that, so... <laughs> I like this yellow hat arts. And I think you're referring to the rug of tone. It makes me think more about the shape. Yeah, it's a very different mindset. 10,000 Crows says these streams make my day so much better. They make my day better. I mean, every time I'm chatting with you guys and talking about this stuff, like, doesn't it feel good to hang out with people who get it? Like, I, I really think you get it or you don't. Like, if people just... People will appreciate that you're an artist, but it's not the same thing as when they understand why. Why are you bothering to do this? 
what do you get out of it? And and really, it's like, I don't know. I always feel like artists, like, we're from some, like, alien planet. And it's like, somehow the Discord, like, we all landed on that alien planet. And we're like, oh, really? There are other people like that? It's, like, really, really nice. Nicoletta says... Finally made it. This is my first draw along. I'm having a blast. Well, that's so exciting. I'm so happy you can join us today, Nicoletta. Simple Triscoll says, I never really did warm up to four. Love these. Definitely warm up now before I go ahead and work on my own pieces. You know something though, you guys, if I were drawing by myself, I probably would do those five minute drawings for like an hour an hour and a half. Like it really takes me that long. I don't do as much for the live drawing streams because otherwise we'll be here for four hours, but I really, really value that warm up time. And actually when I sit down to draw, the assumption I make is that the first 30 minutes is throwaway time. That's the time to sink into the process and nothing really happens until 30 minutes in. And by the way, you guys, don't tell yourself that a bad drawing is wasted time. It's not. In fact, I think I saw somebody post something similar in the Discord the other day. They said, oh, I did all these drawings and they're really terrible. I don't like them at all. That was such a waste of my time. It's not. Every time you sit down to draw and to make artwork, you are learning. It's all going to the same pot of soup. So don't tell yourself that you're a failure or that was not a good use of your time because when you learn from that, you take away an experience that you then can apply to something else. Paula Van Dry is saying, are the streams weekly? They usually are. We're trying to have at least one every week. I'm hoping we can schedule more. It's really like a scheduling thing in terms of our staff, but we're trying to have at least one a week, if not more than that in the coming month. Carolyn is asking, do you have any suggestions for daily exercises like scales or arpeggios for music practice? I think, Carolyn, just your drawings. If I were to pick anything to help you get better at drawing and to train your eye, it's definitely just your drawings because there are a lot of structured exercises that people put out there. But you know what? I have this like one really crummy sketchbook. I mean, it's pretty much like the size of my phone. It's like really, really small. And I just carry it around with me in my purse. And I just take it out when I'm like waiting in line at the grocery store. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, let's draw this cashier. <laughs> like, I mean, you have to do it in a non creepy way, obviously. But I, I like doing that because actually that sketchbook, I don't really show it to anybody. It just sits in my purse. So I think having gesture drawings in a private place where you're not sharing that with anybody, it feels good, doesn't it? Because there is a lot of pressure nowadays for people to show everything they make and put it on Instagram and get attention. I love having a private sketchbook. It's just a really, really nice thing. Okay, let's get back into it. So let me get into my drawing pose like this. Okay, and I think for this one, I am actually going to use some black. So let's see, let me pull up the next one. Guys, I love this portrait. This guy's amazing. He's so cool. I saw this portrait and I was like, oh my God, I have to draw this guy. He's incredible. I forget what his name is. It's in the video description if you guys want to pop up the link. But oh my God, this is so intense. I just love this guy. Like, what is he thinking? I don't know, like, what did she capture that his eyes are, like, popping out of his eye sockets? It's really extraordinary. Okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes, which is a lot longer, but I'm, I'm pretty warmed up now. I'm pretty much ready to go. So I want to see if I can get that going. All right, so let's start with the brown, Conte crown. And I really want to make his face... This guy has like such a, I don't know, I, I feel like the top of his head is like chiseled. <laughs> I don't know, like it looks like marble that somebody's like chunked away on the sides. He's got great hair as well. Okay, let's really go for serious bone structure, guys. And you know what I'm going to challenge you to do? And I'm going to challenge myself to do the same thing. Can you keep this drawing gestural and free and fresh and spontaneous? but work on it for a long period of time. That is hard because usually at a certain point you start picking 
And so I'm going to challenge you guys to really see if you can keep that freshness, that spontaneity, spontaneity over a longer period of time. It's challenging. It's really hard. And you know something? I had so much fun doing that rugged tone first. I'm going to do that again. Because you know what? I felt looser. I, I feel like maybe in some of the other streams, maybe I was looking too hard and maybe the line got me a little bit tight. So I'm going to just go for it. All right. I hope I have enough space for his hair. I mean, his hair is so, so dramatic. You know, I might actually shrink him a little bit. I think I made him a little bit too big. So if I put the eye sockets like here and I move, move it down, I guess that moves the nose down as well. And guys, don't be afraid to just draw over it. You make a mistake, you don't have to erase everything, okay? Like you can see, I just drew over things. That is faster and more fluid than if every time I got to pull up my eraser. It's a big pain. So don't be afraid to just draw right over your marks. That really is okay. Oh, I cannot wait to draw his eyes. Oh my God, who else is like freaking about the eyes I am? <laughs> like you ever look at these portraits and you're like, oh my God, I want to draw that part. <laughs> like, there's always like a fun part that everybody wants to do. I think this is my issue. I always make the chin too small. I don't know. It's like, by the time I get the mouth in, I never have enough chin. I don't know if that's just my issue, but I find that to be difficult. And does everybody notice the shoulders? How this shoulder is lower than this one up here? I mean, part of this is the collar, but that is an important distinction to make because it does change the angle of his neck. Oh, you guys, check out his Adam's apple. He's got a great Adam's apple. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen one that pronounced in a photo that we've drawn from in one of these live streams. Okay, we gotta get back up to the hair and really show the, this is such a great example of seeing the masses, okay? You see this? There's a mass here. There's a mass going in, let me lower that. There's a mass going in this direction. That is the direction of the hair. Does everybody see that? That's what you're looking for. You can't draw individual hairs. You have to look for the motion, the direction of the hair. Oh, dude, you got great hair. I love this. And then look at the hairline, which is more like that. He's got great forehead wrinkles. Oh, this is such an amazing photo. See, it's like, I need to work from something that feels real. Like I look at those stock photos and I know that they're helpful guys. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using them. It's just my personal taste. I, I, just, I don't know, I can't get into it. Like it just, to me, it's not exciting. Like I need to draw somebody who really has character. Okay, let's let's really get in the nose. The lighting in this piece is not great. It's not that dramatic. Actually, I think the eyes are too low. I gotta fix that. Okay, so let, let's just put the eyes further up like here and let's move up the eyebrows like this. So this is more where the eyes are like that. Oh, it's such a pain. Like with a portrait, you fix one thing, you gotta fix everything else. It's a total like domino effect. Okay, this is gonna be a mess. I'm just warning you, my drawing's gonna be a total mess, but I'm gonna own it. That's really what it's about. <laughs> As an artist, you gotta own stuff. You have to just like really make people come along with you. That's an important thing. Cause you know, if you don't believe in your drawing, nobody else is gonna believe in your drawing. And I don't mean that to be depressing. I mean that as in you have control over that. A lot of people, I, I don't think want to take responsibility. And I'm like, you should, you should feel like you have ownership when you are making your drawings. You should not feel that this is just something where you're cruising along and, oh, I hope it works out okay. I mean, take responsibility for it. Now that's hard because <laughs> if your drawing doesn't come out good, you can give yourself a hard time and be like, ooh. <laughs> like that is the drawback of that. But I would rather feel that I have agency over the drawing I'm making rather than say, oh, well, I don't have any control over it. It's just, that's the way it is. Okay. And then notice this, you guys, does everybody see how his neck, this shadow area, it's darker than the shirt. So show that color difference because a lot of people just assume that the skin is going to be a certain, um, I don't know, tone compared, like, and I, I just think that you have to look at it, okay? 
you might assume that, oh, this is a fair-skinned person, so of course their skin is going to be lighter than the shirt, but that's not always the case. In fact, I had a teacher, and I thought this was a really good suggestion. He said that if you really want to see skin tone, have the model wear something white, like a white bathrobe or a white shirt. So no matter what their skin tone is, that white really brings out the skin tone. Like it highlights how dark or how light skin is. So that that's a really good trick. Because most of the time people are not wearing like full out white stuff. Most of the people are wearing like, you know, something that has some degree of tone. And so when you put like a white shirt or bathrobe on them, it really does change things. This guy's really angular. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Maybe a little bit of detail in the ears. I don't want to do too much though. And, and that's one thing I'm very conscious of is like, I don't want to overdo things. Like there are definitely parts of this portrait that are more important than others. And so I'm going to see if I can really prioritize that. There might be parts of the drawing right now that are done. Maybe I don't need to work on them anymore. Who knows? I mean, I have to try it to see what happens. Okay, he's got this really like chunky mandible. I guess it's because the skin is sort of um, chunky there. I don't know. He's got wonderful folds. Like I, I love this little fold here by the mandible. And then I, I got to make his zygomatic arch a little bit more dramatic. And dude, this is not helping me that you have gray hair there. That is really hard. <laughs> um, all right. Maybe a little bit more careful work on the forehead wrinkles because his are really pronounced. I love them. They're so cool. And then this, this one, actually the, the most pronounced one is the one that's in the middle. So let's really push that one in. All right. I've been avoiding the eyes, so let's not do that anymore. Let's just get them in. Actually, you know what I was doing? I was saving them for last. <laughs> you guys ever do that? Like sometimes I get, um, you know, you get like gummy bears and your favorite are the red ones. Tell, tell me, those of you who eat gummy bears, what's your favorite color? Mine is definitely red. And so what I do is when I get a thing of gummy bears, I always eat the colors I don't like first. I'll eat like the clear ones, I'll eat the green ones. And then I save all the red ones for last. So that's kind of what I did with the eyes. I was like, I really want to draw these, but I want it to feel good when I draw them. So <laughs> I'm saving them for last. Okay. Let's move those eyebrows up a little bit. And I really am going to emphasize the eyelids. This is where my eraser stick is really going to help. So actually I should get that out. I mean, to me, it's still a little bit too early to use the eraser stick, but I sort of need it to pull out some of these more dramatic areas. Okay. And then let's get in some of the pupil really briefly, but I, I really do want to like build the bags around the eyes and also the eyelids, especially the lower ones. I feel like a lot of people don't draw the lower eyelid enough. And I think it, it hurts the drawing quite a bit. Okay, now here, I'm going to get in the pupils and they're popping out. Oh my God, you can almost see like the entire circle of the pupils. That doesn't really happen. Like most of the time, half of the pupil is like underneath the eyelid, but not today. So I'm going to put in some dark here. And then does everybody see here that like bright highlight on the eye? I'm going to draw around it because the second I put contact crayon on that area, it's not going to be as bright as I want it to be. So I'm going to do the like darkest part of the pupil. I'm going to leave this here and I'm drawing around that highlight so that if I want to go in and I want to bring it out, it's not like covered with stuff. Okay. One is definitely bigger than the other. That's okay. I have to say that felt good. I love drawing eyes, it's so fun. <laughs> Move these off a little more and maybe some more accentuation of this area. I definitely need to go in with an eraser pretty soon, but I don't wanna do it just yet because I feel like there's still a lot of things in here that feel very unresolved to me. Like the nose is not happening right now and I need darker shadow in this bag. Actually, this got a little too thick. I think it's making it hard for me to put in the bags under the eyes. So let's redo that lower lid over here. Move that bag of the eye this way. And this is a really cool intersection where you see he's got this one 
wrinkle that sort of crosses over the bag of the eyes. And then these wrinkles come this way. This is where I might bring in some of the black to keep that going. I think I made them too wide. Isn't he too wide? I think I need to like cut back on the sides a little bit more like this. So what I'm trying to do right now is just like look at it from a distance because I feel like I'm getting a little too swept up in some of those details and I want to get a better sense of the, the overall shape of the head. Um, and maybe, oh, this crease, I really, really need this crease. This crease is so, so helpful because it really helps me place what's happening in the jaw area. And up here, I'm gonna pull out some more highlight. See, you guys want it, the Conte Crite, it doesn't erase that well. Like it, it really is not good at this. So I find it very challenging in that sense because even here where I'm erasing, you can still see it pretty well. Actually, I gotta move the hair up. I don't think he has enough forehead. So I'm gonna push this up a little bit. Again, it's like I can never stay on the page. Like this paper is very small for me. I mean, for other people, it's fine, but I like to draw really big. So yeah, he definitely, yeah, I totally underestimated. Okay, now he looks like he's got like Frankenstein. <laughs> like you see the, like, these two like white, like the stripes, or maybe that's Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know. <laughs> he definitely looks a little funky. That's okay. I feel that I'm not exaggerating him enough. I, I think I'm making him a little bit too plain. I mean, this guy is a character, you guys. So I'm gonna just make a mess and I'm going to make him more dramatic than I think he should be. So that means really pushing in the eye sockets here. Oh crap, I got this like, sort of like hard spot. You guys ever get that with Conte Crayon? There's sometimes like a hard spot that gets in the way a little bit. And so you have to be careful with it. Sometimes that can really get in the way of things. I'm gonna slow down and articulate more of this stuff. And actually this is the time where I do wanna show the whites of the eyes. Oftentimes people do the whites of the eyes and they're really not necessary, but this guy really does have whites of the eyes. So let me just punch up this section of this eye really fast. And then I'm gonna go in with the eraser stick and I'm gonna really make those eyes pop. Oh, is that too big on this side? I think I have too much eyelid here. Let's try that. Okay, that is wonky, okay. <laughs> Why do you guys think his eyes are like this? Like, is he surprised or is he really stressed? Or is he anxious? I, I'm not sure. Like, I can't totally tell what, what's going on with this guy. This is very interesting. You, you just wonder, what were these people doing when Dorothea Lange found them? Why are they like this? And photographers really, it's a hard skill. Like, if you're doing documentary stuff, you can't control the circumstances so much of the time. And so you just wonder how photographers like stumble across this type of thing. Okay, I'm gonna lean back and I'm gonna do some evaluation from a distance because I still, ooh, you guys should step back too. If you haven't stepped back, try to do it fairly soon because you wanna get full view of the piece. Like you don't want to just be stuck in one area for too long. And, and actually that's how you screw up proportions is when you don't step back and look at the piece, it's much easier to lose that sense of form. Let's just get his, I, feel, I, I really need to get the shape better. You know what's tricky here? It's, it's like this part of his head, a lot of that is like little bits of hair coming down. It's not actually the side of his head. So that's much trickier. And his, okay, his hair is messed up. Oh my God, what a disaster. I'm sorry. Sorry, dude, I'm sorry I'm making you look, well, you are kind of weird looking, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Love this portrait, it's a great portrait. Like I said, it's a real person, not somebody who has been, you know, too polished. That, that's what bothers me about Pinterest. Like I know a lot of people like Pinterest, but I, I find it really difficult because everything's like so glossy and I don't really like that very much. <sighs> okay. 
I think I better get onto the mouth because I'm sort of losing the upper lip. Get that a little more dramatic. And actually there's like a really cool like little highlight here on the lip. Does everybody see that? That is really cool. And the eraser stick is gonna help me a couple of these areas. And I gotta dig in. Yeah, like this is really strong. I'll make the eyebrows a little stronger. I'm sort of surprised that I'm doing the eraser stick right now, but I guess the Conte crown, it's like stubborn enough that I, I feel that I need the strength of the eraser stick. Like right now to me, the kneaded eraser would not help at all. I, I really need the boldness of the white plastic eraser and the, the eraser stick. Oh my God, this is a weird portrait I'm drawing. I don't know, I kind of like how weird it is though. He's so like lopsided and strange. This is a beautiful wrinkle coming down. I think I'm slowing down a little bit. That's okay. I think that, well, I don't know. It kind of depends. Like, I don't know if any of you guys saw the tutorial that we released recently of Song Kang's pen and pencil drawing technique. She's so interesting because I just sort of assumed that she was like me, that she would draw faster in the beginning and then get uh, slower and slower. That's how I draw. I start super fast and then I get slow. But she does the opposite. She told me that she gets anxious about the end. And by the time she's almost done with the drawing, she's really like racing almost to do that finish. So I really was surprised when I heard that. I, I had no idea that that was going to be the case with her drawing technique. Okay, let's do some more line work. Like these are great. Dude, I love your wrinkles. So cool. All right, maybe a little more here. It's, I'm having a little trouble because the, the photograph doesn't have great lighting. Like the lighting's okay, but it's not phenomenal. It's, it's also, oh God, these eyes are, they're wonky. <laughs> they're definitely not lighting up. Oh, well, that's okay. I can deal. Oh man, he looks evil now. Come on, I don't want you to look evil. I mean, you look a little bit stressed, but I don't think you're evil. More rugged tone up there. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I put off the shading on the forehead for too long. Is that what it is? I don't know. Whatever. Fill this in at the top. Yeah, I really wish I I should have fit the whole hair on the page because I feel like without the shape of the hair, it's actually very hard to do. And I do want, I only have a minute left in this particular pose, but I do want to add a couple highlights in here, just so the, the language of the eraser stick is better distributed. I, I think it's weird when you only use one tool in like one space. Sometimes that can get very confusing. So I try to like distribute all the stuff as much as I can. Oh, I feel like I need a charcoal pencil or something. Like these eyes are they're pretty tricky to do if you don't have like a, a pencil -y type thing. And actually, oh, you know what I really need? I need this like super bright highlight there and also here. Oh, that helps. Nice. Now you actually have a uh, nasal bone. <laughs> That's going to be a lot better. Okay. A little bit of this nostril. This guy, has, he like barely has any philtrum. His philtrum is like totally non-existent. I guess if you like really look, you can kind of find it, but it's not that clear. Okay, I think that is too light. Shoot, I think there's too much hair up here. Okay, that is the first 20 minute session. So let me go to my talk scene. I'm gonna see what you guys are saying. Okay. Let's see what people are talking about. Seven Angelic says he looks surprised. Tom G says hyperthyroid. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if that's the deal with his Adam's apple. I don't know. It's like really hard to say. <laughs> W315 says the photographer held up a toy. <laughs> yeah, you have to wonder what people do to get their sitters 
to do whatever it is they're trying to get them to do. Really, really interesting. El Hadi says, I love your videos. I'm an architecture student and my drawings tend to be technical, but being able to see your work and critiques is like a breath of fresh air. Oh, very cool. You know something, drawing is so helpful when you study architecture because oftentimes at RISD, I used to get these students freshman year and they would say, oh, I don't need to draw. I'm going into architecture. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, it's so helpful from an architecture point of view because there is a lot of drawing involved. It's just, it's not the same type of drawing, but the foundation is definitely there. So I'm really glad we can do that for you. Abby says, I think opening his mouth a bit would change the whole drawing. Oh, for sure. You know, I actually think that in portraits, people usually don't close their mouth. Like if, if you look at this one here, the Diane Arbus image, I think a lot of people stand with their mouth like a little bit open and it does shift the way you see the portrait because the portrait almost breathes a little bit better. Like when people have their mouth like shut like a clam, it's almost uncomfortable to look at. And so I like that feeling of the breath, which is really, really fun. Okay. Add a girl says, feel like I want a Conte pencil for the line work. Not quite comfortable with the chalk stick. You could definitely use a charcoal pencil. I mean, they sell charcoal pencils that are different colors. I just, in general, charcoal pencils bother me a little bit because they're really hard to erase. Like once you put them down, they're pretty permanent. And if you try to erase them, the mark is pretty visible. And I just know that the second I'm holding something like a pencil, I just tighten up automatically. I mean, you guys saw I did those streams with the colored pencil and those are very, very difficult for me to do because it's just, it's pencil. For me, that's very, very tricky. Catherine Chung says, I have a different problem. My portraits look younger and their wrinkles look very slapped on. Wrinkles are hard. I mean, I think what's tricky about wrinkles is that it's easy to think about them as just lines. And to a certain degree, that is true. But the thing is, there is dimensionality to each wrinkle. And if you look closely, you will see tiny, slim shadows in the wrinkles, but they're hard to see. And so oftentimes, wrinkles sometimes, it feels almost like lines have been drawn on the surface. Like they don't feel like they're in the surface of the face. And the mouth is like that too. Like oftentimes we'll see portraits and people draw the mouths as if the mouths are almost like stuck on. Like, you know, those Halloween lips, <laughs> those like puffy red lips that we used to wear in third grade and stuff. It's like that. It's like, it just stuck on. It's not actually in the flesh. And that's what you really want to be trying to do. All right, Noor Nihar Malik, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name correctly. I drew in oil pastels, couldn't erase. There, there is something really compelling about that, you guys. Not being able to erase really changes your mindset and it makes it so that you really have to confront your drawing. I mean, the eraser, I think sometimes it's a little bit too much of a crutch for people and they end up going backwards too much. I'd rather just plow ahead because just, for me, it feels a little bit more dramatic. When I have to backtrack a lot, I get a little bit bummed because it feels like, oh, I messed that up. I have to go back. Nobody wants to go back. You want to just keep plunging forward. I think it's a lot more fun. Uh, Marcus says, vine charcoal is the best to practice drawing, in my opinion. Vine charcoal is great because it's extremely forgiving. You can wipe it out with your hand. You don't even need an eraser. It's fantastic for that, but it's not good long term. Like if I'm doing a drawing that is a lot more involved, like I want to work on it for several hours, I try not to use the vine charcoal for too long and I try to switch to compressed charcoal, which is a lot more permanent. Because vine charcoal, let me tell you, it'll stab you in the back. If you're not looking, it'll just blow away because somebody breathed on it. So it really has this fragility that long term is not good. It's great in the beginning when you're very, very loose. You want everything to go all over the place. That's totally fine. So yeah, I mean, my feeling is that depending on how you draw, different materials have different purposes depending on what is going on. Luke Miller says, yep, I found it difficult to keep the gestural quality with a longer time allowance. It looks more like a fully sketch. <laughs> Maybe that means your portrait is gritty. <laughs> like, maybe you think about it like that. 
but it is challenging. It's really, really hard. And it only gets harder the longer you work on the drawing because the temptation to pick becomes very dramatic. And I do the same thing. I mean, I looked at this one draw along, actually it's the one that I did with Diane Arbus. And this one of the person with the rollers actually ended up being my favorite drawing of that session, but it was not the longest drawing I did. The longest drawing I did, I didn't like. I, I felt like I got a little bit tired and this drawing to me has a lot more freshness to it. So I, I actually did like the shorter one a lot more. And Louise is saying, I really enjoy drawing along, but I'm always finding difficulty with the value even more than with proportions. That's fine. I mean, I think people have different strengths and weaknesses and some people, the proportions are tougher. Some people, they're easier. I mean, what I would just do, Louise, is just make sure with the value that you're representing every stage of value. So you ask yourself, do I have the darkest darks? Do I have mid-tones? Do I have areas where maybe I'm preserving the white of the paper? So it's almost like if you check off each one of those values. And really what I typically see, not all the time, people usually are a little hesitant to put down those darks because it is a commitment. Once it's down there, it's pretty hard to erase. But like I said, make some sacrifice drawings. If you make a drawing for five minutes, it doesn't matter if you mess up. I mean, that drawing is not gonna determine your life. It's really not that important. A Victor says, first time I sketch along. Yeah, tell me you guys, if this is your first time in a draw along, because I know there are a lot of regulars here who do great stuff, but it's so exciting to me when somebody joins a draw along for the first time, you work with us live for the first time. It's such a different, interaction. Because I know some of you guys, obviously time zone can be a little bit tricky, but it's really, really fun when people are here for the first time. Lunaire says, I usually use thick, really soft graphite lead for sketching because I'm left-handed and I keep smudging charcoal. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's tricky. If you're left-handed, it's not easy because the smudging is definitely a lot more common. Atta Girl says, have you got a video on values? We don't have one specifically on that. However, I think if you look at the drawing streams of the drawings that are more finished, you'll see a broader range of value because some of the sketches, it's like you just don't have time to get there. But actually, I would say probably the best one for that, let's just talk about Benedict again. Because this drawing, I actually really did go to town on. So that is really, really helpful to see a drawing like full out to the end because in the quick sketches, you don't get that. By the way, I wanna give a shout out to 10,000 Crows who gave us a sticker earlier and also to Tom G who just gave us a super chat, draw along fun. Thank you so much, you guys for supporting us. We really, really appreciate that. And AJ says, I'm too apprehensive to use charcoal. It's so messy, just try it you know, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> like, that's the nice thing about all these things. And if you go into the drawing saying to yourself, I don't care what happens. It's a lot better. So much of it is your mind. Like people think drawing is all about your hands and what your fingers are doing. It's not. It's all in your head. Because depending on where I am mindset wise is all the difference in the world. Like if I'm half asleep, I can't do it. doesn't matter how great my hands are. So you really have to be in this like, kick-ass mode to draw. It's sort of like any of you guys play sports. Like I used to play volleyball in high school and you know, you do that like, oh, like all those stupid things like to get yourself psyched. Like, I feel the same way about drawing that I need to like get pumped up, you know, that all those dumb things that we used to do, but they work like they're very effective. So it really does not matter. Kathleen says, I'm a regular catcher upper, but this is my first time here in real time. Great references. Fabulous. Yeah. And we love it when you guys catch up later. We know you can't always make it to the live stream, but you can always post like we were saying earlier in draw alongs and people do that. They'll like watch the stream later, post their pieces. And I have a lot of people who are like going back into the archives and doing like the really early draw alongs just for more practice. So anytime you guys can do this, post in the drawing, it just, oh my God, it makes me so happy when I see what you guys are making. Vatal Hari says, are you guys doing a video about including photography in an art portfolio? We don't have a video specifically on that, 
However, we do have a complete art school portfolios guide that is on artprof.org under tutorials. So check that out because you should. If you do photography, that's a great thing to put in your art school portfolio. You just don't want to have like 20 photos. You want to have maybe three is probably pretty good because you want to have space for other things as well. Ooh, Blue Bull Spirit says we're already uploading to the Discord. Very cool. I can't wait to see. Matthias is saying, I've been trying to do some oil painting portraits for at least a year. Just finished this crown portrait and fell in love with the one I drew now. Thank you. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, if you guys paint, drawing is always going to help you. It's such a great foundation for things you do in painting. So I strongly encourage that. Okay, let's go back. I want to work on this one another 20 minutes. Get some of the black Conte in there and see where I can go. It's still a mess. That's fine. But I want to see another 20 minutes what is going to happen with this drawing. Okay, let me get back into my drawing position. And we will now change scenes. Okay, so we're going to stick with this guy. Oh, it looks really weird. <laughs> like, isn't this strange? Like, I only stepped away from this drawing for like five minutes to look. It already looks weird to me. Like, did anybody else have that experience? Like, you go back and you're like, whoa, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> okay, that's good though, because that means that I'm starting to look at this drawing with a fresh set of eyes in a way that maybe I couldn't do before. Okay, I'm gonna do some squinting because I'm trying to figure out. The hairline is like really messing with me. So I guess maybe I just need some more highlight here. I'm not, mm, I don't know, I'm not totally sure. Like it's really, really confusing me. Okay, maybe a little bit more here. I, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do guys? I'm gonna fight a battle. This drawing's gonna be a civil war. That's what I would like it to be. Because that that's my feeling is like, okay, even if the drawing doesn't come out great, at least I can say I fought a battle. <laughs> it did something that really had an impact. Okay. Except with, you know, all the history and killing and stuff like that. It's a metaphorical war. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, the hair definitely. Who, who else is going nuts with the hair? The hair is kind of driving me crazy right now. And I do need to give it more attention because the shape is so influential to the rest of the portrait. I don't feel that I can really just let it take care of itself. Like sometimes you have hair and it's sort of like, ah, whatever, but not this time. And I'm gonna erase away some of the negative space in the back so that becomes maybe a little bit more dramatic. To see that shape of the head a little bit better. Okay, I'm still, still doing some squinting. I'm still looking and evaluating where this is going to go. Oh, this is really hard because oh, this is, so there's like gray hair here. There's black hair or dark hair. And then there's like a shadow that is part of his cranium. I'm so confused. I'm so anatomically confused right now. <laughs> okay. This ear could definitely use more definition. Ugh, now he looks like he's wearing a gigantic black earring. I don't want that. I gotta go back to the eye. The eyes are really bothering me. I mean, they always bother me. That is not new. I'm just saying that they need a little bit more refinement, I suppose. Is that what I'm asking? I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, this, this is the time when I really am in danger of just making the drawing very stiff and picky. So I'm going to try not to do that. And I really am going to try to be more careful with some of my remarks without losing the initial energy of the piece, because I don't want that. I, I definitely want to keep those like more rigorous marks. Okay. I, I will say you guys, my head is a little distorted in the video because like my drawing board is a little bit tilted. So when I put it in the discord later, you're going to see it a little bit more accurately because I can, I can already tell there's a lot of distortion going on, but um, that's okay. Okay. I really want to do these wrinkles. Like, 
been very prominent. But this one here, I'm gonna really slow down right now because I gotta follow. Where do these wrinkles go? Like, how do they, how do they sit inside the form? Oh, the stupid contact crayon. It's got like this hard spot. It's driving me crazy. I'm gonna switch to this one. Okay, and let, let's really define the nose. I feel like the nose got away from me a little bit. And actually, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a kneaded eraser. Not that much. Okay, let's see. Can you lift out? Ooh, that felt good. Okay, <laughs> maybe I need to use a kneaded eraser more. Um, uh, yeah, that did feel good. How come I, where have you been my whole life, kneaded eraser? I don't know, I guess I was kind of ignoring you for a little while. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't tend to do a lot of smudging. I do it in moderation, but it can be helpful, especially when you want things to have like a softer look to them. Okay, I'm gonna pull out a couple of these wrinkles here. He's got amazing wrinkles on like the bags under his eyes. So I want those to be more prominent. And they're, they're sort of like, what are they doing? They're sort of like going across the form. And I also find with wrinkles that it helps to erase them down. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. So what I'll do is I'll draw the wrinkles in like this. Let me get this one. This one's really prominent. And then there's a couple that come down like this. And this one, this almost looks like um, veins that are sort of traveling across. And there's a lot of here. So actually here, I think I'm going to pull in my eraser stick. So up here, I can bring out some of those wrinkles from like a highlight point of view and make them a little bit rounder and more organic because I think that they were, they were a little bit too sharp and they, they need to have a softer look to them. So the whole key to wrinkles is you need them to really sink. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have this wrinkle here and I have a couple more that are coming down like this, that way. And then here, I'm actually gonna accentuate this highlight. Oh, and I also need to do it in the neck, shoot. Cause he's got these wrinkles that come across the neck like this. Actually, I gotta fix his collar. He really needs less collar back there. Now, do you guys see on the neck, it's hard to see in the photo, but there are wrinkles that come down the side of his neck like this. And there's actually quite a bit of texture down here. So let me position this. You guys can see that a little bit better. Um, the Adam's apple, which is coming up. And even more wrinkles, like there's this one wrinkle that, uh, I guess it travels up a little bit like this. Yeah, so I, I just want more texture back here because this neck is definitely not smooth. It definitely has texture to it. Okay. So that's a little bit better. And now I'm gonna do, I guess I need to do some serious eraser work. So maybe in here, and then let's lock this in. I, I lost that like sharp highlight in the nose. Everybody remember that? Let's get that back because it's sort of dark in the middle. And then it gets like very round up here. And then I guess it gets a little bit darker in the center. Let's do a little bit of smudging. Ugh, getting picky again. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't get picky. Oh, I need more. I need more of those forehead wrinkles. I'm totally losing that. Okay, so th this will help. Does everybody see how the forehead wrinkles, they follow the form of the eye socket? That is very important to know. See how they come around on the side? Like a lot of people think that forehead wrinkles are just like across. They're not. They actually are very round. So like this one comes around, this one, oh shoot, now I'm getting lost. That one goes this way and then there's another one that crosses over, I think. Okay, and here I am gonna do some kneaded eraser work to get these to sink a little bit better because they're not quite as dark as I made them. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here with these wrinkles and I'm gonna sort of downplay them a little bit because they're a little bit too strong. I don't want them to be that dramatic. This is where the eraser stick is awesome. 
This is the best school. I just, I love eraser tips. They're amazing. Okay, this one is very prominent. So it's almost like you pick wrinkles. Ooh, not that prominent. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You, you pick wrinkles to really stick out and then you pick ones that are going to be a little bit more subtle. So like up here, I think there are these wrinkles that sort of push outwards like this. And then let's get this one to come down. Ugh. Maybe like that. Okay, I got 11 minutes yet. Shoot. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I, I got to step back and sort of think. I, I don't know if I want to do the background. I, I kind of do. Okay, I did it. <laughs> there it is. And I just think it might give this figure a little bit more presence if I can block in that background. And then there's like a little bit of a gradient back here. And that definitely will help with this collar and make this collar look a little bit harsher and that definitely does emphasize that area a little bit better i'm not going to do too much well i don't know though this shouldn't be so light though so let's just block this in e even this shirt is not really that light okay let's give you some strokes here to get some of those wrinkles in and then i don't know should i do the black maybe i should I said I was, so I probably should, right? <laughs> he needs his eyebrows back. Yeah, see this, actually this is more what it looks like, guys. Does everybody see that? Like I'm holding it like this, but it really looks more like this. So anyway, <laughs> in case you're wondering like, why is he so wonky? That's one of the reasons. Okay, let's go back in and work on the eyes a little more. I really wanna pop out these eyelids because there's like these little highlights here that are more dramatic than I've made them. And like, especially here, there's like this glimmer. I mean, this is where I just want to like <laughs> grab white gouache and like paint over it, which I'm not going to do. Like the temptation is definitely there to want to do that. And I think I, I don't know. I think maybe I like outlined the eyelids a little bit too much. I also want to clean up the whites of the eyes, because unlike most portraits, these whites of the eyes actually are that dramatic and they do need that level of emphasis that I was talking about before. So let's try that. But I don't want to do too much. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of black, just in a couple like key spots, but I don't want it to like kill the piece. That's the thing. I'm sort of worried that like once I put it in, everything is going to change, which yeah, it will. I know, I know but I'm just gonna use it in a couple of key spots, like stuff I really wanna like emphasize more. So like definitely I think underneath the eyelids for sure and maybe in some of these other areas. And maybe this is my chance, I think, to give it another like fresh feeling out there. Um, because the black, I can be a little bit looser with it because the, the brown has really taken care of a lot of the things already and that's kind of nice. So if I bring this in, I don't know, I'm sort of worried I'm gonna kill it, but whatever, it's fine, right? Let's get the mouth really in there. And I don't know, now I might regret this like really bad, but whatever, we'll see. I think especially, well, I don't know. It might really help me with the hair. I, I feel like I've been struggling with the hair a lot. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I think the key is you, you just have to make sure the black is everywhere because if you only put it in a couple spots, it definitely looks strange. Like it has to feel like it's embedded in the color. You have to have that. If you don't have that, it's, it's pretty tricky. Okay. I, I love these eyes. Like I just want to... <laughs> want to keep them going like that. Maybe a little bit more there I don't know guys I hope this is a good idea <laughs> maybe I should have to put in the black <laughs> maybe this is just making things worse I don't know maybe a little bit more on the eye because I do like the idea of like just adding sort of like glossing over a couple of detailed areas and maybe just like pumping up 
some of the values because it, it's like it's visibly so much darker than what's happening in the rest of the piece. So anyway, let me know you guys in the chat. Is anybody here doing like two different shades or two different colors? I'm sort of curious. I don't know. I guess I just like, I love earth tones and I think they're like really pretty and beautiful. And so to me, I, I just like the color. And then on top of that, I'm using the like toned Stonehenge paper. So that also gives it like another layer of depth, which is nice. Okay, maybe just a quick pass. Oh, I gotta get back here too though, because if I lose that um, area on the side, let's, let's just let's do that. Okay, it looks bad on the screen though. I'll, I'll take a photo of it, that's better. And you guys can see what it looks like in the Discord because just on the YouTube screen, it just never looks that good. Maybe this atom drop it. Yeah, that definitely needs some dark going on in there and maybe some more. So you can notice I, I'm trying to be sort of careful about the black, but maybe I don't need to be. Maybe I'm over, I totally am. Oh man, Ugh. who else is overthinking it? Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> who else is like, maybe this, maybe that. What about that mark? <laughs> Okay, this, this ear really needs work. Um, maybe this like little pocket of black in there. And let me just really articulate that bottom part of the ear. And maybe here, this like little pocket of dark, maybe that'll help. Oh, this ear really needs work. Okay, I guess what I'm trying to do with the black, I'm trying to give myself more contrast, but I'm also trying to I don't know, spike it up a little, <laughs> make it more dramatic than it needs to be. I am really bummed about the hair. I feel like this was such a great chance to do hair. I don't think I did a very good job of it. <laughs> maybe a little bit more on the eyes. I don't know, maybe maybe a little brown. I think maybe I made the eye, eyelids too dark. I'm not really sure. It's a little hard to tell. I'm squinting right now. So I'm looking at that. I'm sort of asking myself like how much of that really needs to go. And I'm gonna do another pass just of like some lines because I think the lines are very helpful. And especially in the wrinkles, I just wanna pop some of those out a bit more. Maybe just trying to be a little more rigorous, like show the line more. I, I think I'm getting a little picky. So let's get some of these lines just to really like cross over. Like he even has a couple that are sort of like going this way. Maybe if I block some of those in, that's gonna have a little more depth. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, oh, I only have three minutes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to blend the black with the brown. So now I'm putting the brown over the black and that is a different experience, it really is. Okay, this ear should be shaped more like that. Oh, that is better, okay. And then some strokes maybe coming this way to get the hair going across. And hmm, this hair is driving me crazy. This hair is so difficult. And this guy does not make my life easy. I mean, I want it to be easy creatively, creatively. <laughs> like I would love for my regular life to be easy. <laughs> and, and most of the time it is. Like I don't have a lot to complain about. I really should not. Okay. Um, maybe more emphasis here. Oh, that black is not good. I don't like what I just did there. That was bad. Um, I don't know, I guess I want like more rigorous lines, but Maybe if I emphasize this nose a little bit more in this crease. And actually there's creases down here too. I should have done these a little bit more. I don't know, I didn't work on the chin very much. What is it with me and chins? Like I just, oh, I really wanted these eyes to be more mesmerizing, but I just don't feel like they are. Oh, two minutes, who else is whining? Please whine with me. <laughs> so I don't feel like such a baby, okay. One more pass on that zygomatic arch. We gotta get that in there. This one too. I really need my zygomatic arch. 
Zygomatic Arch really can be everything, in my opinion. Ooh, the mouth. I've been ignoring the mouth. Okay, I need the pocket. I need a little bit more shadow and maybe more highlight here to show that. Yeah, I didn't do very well in this mouth. This mouth really could be better. Yeah, it, it definitely needs more. Maybe just a bit more form here, like something minor. But ah, uh, too much black outline. All right. I hope somebody else is having a silly dialogue in their head like me. <laughs> too much, more here, no. <laughs> Tell me if you guys are obsessing like me, because I'm at that point in the drawing where I'm starting to do that and it's really not good. Like, I don't recommend that. Maybe just a little bit more on the top of the eyes so they really have a little more presence. And I need the fist to come in more. 35 seconds. Let's do it. This is it. Okay. And oh, 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 just a little bit of muted eraser work to pull in some of these marks because that will definitely help. Okay, this is more what the drawing looks like. Does everybody see? Because of the tilt of the drawing board, that's more what the piece actually looks like. And I will post the picture of it in the Discord so that way you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, so let me take a look at what you guys are saying. Is there a one here? Okay. Tell me, you guys, what you think about the drawing that you made, drawings that you made today, because we made a lot. And what was your drawing session like? And are you feeling energized and motivated? Because I do. Now I'm like, okay, Clara, you can, you can go work on those veiled sculpture pieces because, oh, I did not like the one I did last time. It was not very good. Okay, let's see what people are talking about. Matt's Feather says, I used to fall in love with my art until I became consciously incompetent. Yeah, I know that feeling. I, I think sometimes it's a total set of mood swings when you draw. You're like, I love it. I hate it. You suck. I love you. You know, sometimes it just like really depends on what's going on. And let's see what else people are saying. A reach, a yari is saying, what does it mean to make the drawing stiff? I mean, it depends on the drawing, but I would just say in general that the drawing feels like a statue, like it, it's still, it doesn't have a feeling of movement or breath, at least when you're drawing the human figure. It's a little bit different when you're drawing other things. But also I think um, when things are maybe too tightly rendered, like there's a million details and you lose the initial gesture, of the form. That can happen pretty quickly. Uh, Vault Hari says, how do you avoid making a dark outline around the figure when the background is dark? Example, the left ear. Well, I think what I try to do is I put like a patch of tone there instead, because then it's like the edge of the tone becomes what would normally be the outline. And that's another argument for why it's really good to add shading and to draw background because if you don't draw background you're not going to end up with anything and it's just white background we talked a lot about that in a lot of recent streams about the importance of background because a lot of people oftentimes just leave it out and it can be a problem because it messes up the whole thing Mott's feather says stiff means you messed up the gesture not necessarily i i think stiff is sort of it's hard to define but it's like a mindset it's almost like I feel like when I see a stiff drawing, I get the feeling that the artist is walking on eggshells. I don't wanna walk on eggshells. I wanna take a sledgehammer and smash them. That's what I want my drawings to do. Now, not everybody wants that. Maybe some people want something a little bit different. Maybe you wanna tap the eggshells. I wanna smash them. I wanna get like a bulldozer and just right over that. And so sometimes it's a matter of personal taste. I mean, some people like having drawings that are stiffer. So I'm not saying necessarily that a stiff drawing is inherently bad because it is not. But I do think most people when they start drawing do have a tendency to be stiffer. And the challenge for a lot of people, I think, really is 
in capturing that movement, like especially with figures, because people don't sit still. Even when they're trying to sit still, they can't. You know, even a model in a drawing class is not going to sit perfectly still. In fact, it makes me uncomfortable when people have to sit still. I think it's it's so the opposite of what the human figure is meant to do. So it's challenging. And Voltari says, what color charcoal are you using? I think it's called Bistro. It's in the video description. I have links to all the items that I'm using in the video description below. And they're also in the Discord. So you guys can find all those links. And Margaret saying, what a difference it made to the proportions when you tilted the drawing to show us. Perspective is everything. Yeah, I can't draw flat. It's just really, really hard because I just can't see it. And I, I try to tilt my camera as much as possible, but there's only so much you can do. So yeah, you guys are getting a really distorted point of view. You'll see it a lot better when we get into the Discord. Anna Banana says, I think the lighting in the photo is a little funky to draw from. The light is in front of his face and all the shadows are kind of vague. Yeah, the, the one we did right before the last drawing had much better lighting, but this guy had great character. So I like really, really wanted to draw him for that reason. A Victor says, I felt so hyper because of the time constraint too, but this feels good. I know, doesn't it? It's like, it's challenging, but you kind of like it <laughs> at the same time. And Emma says, mine's a bit of a mess, super fun, but it's hard to get clarity in my line work and value. Yeah, that can be challenging because you have too much and it looks stiff. You don't have enough. It looks really mushy. Challenging. It's a lot to balance. And Carolyn's Art Adventure says, fun. It'd be interesting to see what I think of these when I look at them later after being away from them for a bit. And Michael Beckett says, I hate breaking a pencil in the middle of a time drawing. Oh man, you should have seen, there was a stream two weeks ago where I, I literally broke like four pencils in a row. So that is not a new thing. So very, very cool, you guys. All right, I would love for you guys to share on Instagram because I love posting these in our Instagram stories. Please think about submitting for an art prof share, which is a YouTube shout out in one of our videos. Our Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And please come hang out with me in the Discord. The invite link is in the video description below where we will be in the Draw Alongs channel. And please post what you made because, oh my God, it's so fun. Like this flood of drawings. Like I feel so energized when I see what you guys made. Subscribe to us on YouTube and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything here possible. Thank you to everybody for drawing along with me, for keeping me company, for making me realize that, yes, I am an alien from another planet. I will see you in the Discord. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.